everyone, and welcome back for another great episode of the Cup of Joe show. I am Joe, that's Jeremy, this is how we do it. Um, man, I would really love to open the show again without doing any of the things that I just did, but uh, that's what we do. We, we do it live. We do it once. It's, it's, it's how we roll. Um, so... We've got a uh, movie to get to, we got box office, we got, and this weekend's upcoming films, which are pretty exciting. So, let's hop right into it, and uh, I saw Sharknado 2, he didn't, I don't know what he was doing with his life, but he didn't see Sharknado 2, so uh, I'll kind of review it. But let's start with, uh, let's start with Lucy, and Jeremy, I want you to start off. Uh, with this, uh, with this movie. Okay. Um, well, in short, I hated it. I thought it was awful. Um, I was insulted by the movie. Uh, it was the worst time I've had at the movies seeing a movie um, all this year. I, I mean, maybe that's a product of a year that's actually been um, pretty good for movies and. Uh, Joe and I have been more discerning in terms of the number of movies that we've seen. You know, there have been years past where up to this point we probably would have already seen, you know, at least 20 movies, whereas this year is closer to 10. And most of those movies were of a pretty decently high quality. But I just thought uh, Lucy was complete garbage. Um, the plot made absolutely no sense. There was hardly even any action. The action that was in there wasn't that cool. Um, the acting was terrible, the special effects were alright, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson, uh, as you probably know from the trailers and whatnot, uh, gets some sort of drug into her system that allows her to unlock, um, more of her brain potential and all that, and throughout the movie, you know, she becomes more powerful and everything, and kind of, like, less human and more detached, um, from humanity, but they never really touch on that. They don't really go much of anywhere with that, aside from, like, one or two lines. And she just becomes an, un an uninteresting robot. And, you know, if you look at Watchmen and Dr. Manhattan, they showed that, like, the powerful person who's detached from humanity because they're powerful can still be a really interesting character and still be pretty human. Like, that can be done well. Lucy did, that, did not do that well at all. And that bothered me. And I just really did not like the movie, so I think I think that's the gist of it. You've seen more than ten movies this year. That that's a, that's an absurd thing. Okay. And I've I've seen okay. like twenty five. Okay. So, well, um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's that's just, just not a true. I'm sorry. Okay. That's, that's just not a true. Statement. I will accept that. I will mm -hmm. accept that. But just it's it's fewer than we have averaged in the past. Okay. All right. So, Lucy. Um, where I, uh, I mostly share uh, the sentiments that you you have. So, um, it 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 tells it tells you a lot of a lot of nothing. It's it's an hour and a half, and it's just like throws stuff at you. Doesn't really explain. It. I mean, it made the purge look like a brilliant film. Um, so, <laughs> comparatively, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty terrible. Um, and the thing is, I think what needs to be pointed out is that it wasn't Scarlett Johansson's fault. It wasn't Morgan Freeman's fault. Um, I mean, they they made them, you know, Morgan Freeman. What like someone could t how someone could put Morgan Freeman in a movie and make him like not Morgan Freeman was I, I just like you don't you, you didn't use Morgan Freeman to his like full potential, although. I would love if he was my uh, uh, professor and, like, gave lectures. That was, like, fantastic. That's Absolutely. all I kept thinking during that scene. Like, <laughs> wow, I wish he taught at the University of Scranton. But, anyway, it wasn't the actor's fault. Um, you know, I, I feel that people did the best what they could with the roles that they were given. It was just horribly, horribly written. Just, like... Like, th just throw, like, random things at you, and it's mm -hmm. just, like, they throw, like, random flashbacks to an ape, and, like, 
like from the first five minutes, I was just like, "This is gonna be terrible if this is how if this is the tone of this film," and and it was. So it was you know it was it was an awful film, a disappointing film. Um, you know, I, I, but the thing is, I, it made a lot of the box office, and a lot of people are just like, "Oh, great for you know, uh, you know, oh, a female fronted movie, you know, commanded so much at the box office." And that is great, please don't get me wrong, but I feel like a lot of people are focusing more on that than the fact that it was a terrible, terrible film. You know, let, let's let's get a Scar uh, Scarlet, uh, I was going to say Scarlet Widow. Look, her I've, name is I've Scarlet, <laughs> her name is Scarlet, and she plays Black Widow. Um, so I, I wish that they did a Black Widow um Hawkeye film before this, and I wish they put uh, Scar Johansson in a better uh, female-fronted role um, in, a, in a better female-fronted movie. I, I just wish that happened. I wish that a female-fronted movie came out, did well at the box office, and was a good film. That's, uh, like, wh what bothers me is that... The Hunger like, Games. The, hung exa the Hunger Games, exactly. So... It's it's upsetting to me, and I think people are not really focusing on the fact that like the movie was awful. So uh, that's that's not a good thing. Um, but uh, again, ScarJo, she dem she demands, you know, people seeing her movies. Yeah. So I mean that that and that and that is that is a great thing in and of itself. I just wish the movie was better. Um, any any more thoughts on that? Uh, it's just disappointing to see the. Um lack of tapping into the potential. I mean, there are so many cool things that you could have done with that. I mean, you know, ScarJo's character, Lucy, uh, gets the ability to basically, like, manipulate matter and do, like, anything she wants. Like, there's this part at the end where she's just, like, looking at her hand and she's, like, making it, like, have webbing and, like, giving herself claws and, like, so she can manipulate herself to, like, basically be anything. So you could do so much with that and have, like, a really cool fight scenes and we just don't so it's true it's true yeah so um disappointing film there um maybe should have seen hercules instead yeah unfortunately our theaters didn't provide the uh, proper times in order to go um which is unusual because it's usually a really late time but it didn't happen anyway <laughs> enough with our local theaters Sorry, viewers in California, you have no idea what we're talking about. But anyway, time for the box office. Alrighty, uh, starting as we always do with number five last weekend was Planes, Fire, and Rescue. That fell 46% to 9.5 million. It has a total of 35.4 million. Um, so it opened weekly. It opened to a weak amount, and... Um, it fell a good amount for a kids' movie, too. So, uh, clearly this is going to make nowhere near the first one, and it's just, I really hope this is the last Planes movie, but we'll see what Disney does. At the very least, I'm sure they'll come out with something on DVD or whatever. There'll be trains. It's the next one. Boats. <laughs> Number four. Uh, that was The Purge Anarchy. That fell 65% to 10.5 and has a total of just under 52 million. 65% uh, sounds steep, but it's actually quite a bit better than The First Purge, which fell, I don't remember exactly offhand, but it was about 75%, which is actually kind of impressive to fall that much. But, um, so it seems like people hate, you know, Anarchy less, and, uh, <laughs> It's guaranteed to outgross uh, the first one at this point, and you know could finish around seventy, seventy-five million, which is pretty good. Number three was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and that fell fifty-four percent to sixteen point eight million, total of one seventy-two point five. Um, I was kind of hoping that would hold better, like forty, forty-five percent, but. Uh, it had direct competition in Lucy and Hercules, which are both, you know, action movies appealing to the, you know, young male crowd and everything. And even the women that would go see Dawn would rather probably go see Lucy, that kind of thing. So, 
that sucks. And now it just has even more competition from Guardians of the Galaxy and then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So just, you know, you would think that, like, a late July release would give it, you know, some time and not much competition. But this year is really weird and has, like, a really packed August. So it happens. It's still going to outgross the first one by a healthy margin. So, you know, hopefully we'll see a third. Okay, number two was Hercules. And that opened to $29.8 million. Um, that's solid, if not um, spectacular. If not unspectacular. Anyway, um, it's, a, it's a decent opening. Uh, it's, it's not a huge breakout or anything, but it's far from a flop. Uh, the budget was $100 million, So, I mean, probably best case scenario is doing like $75 million stateside. But... This strikes me as the kind of movie that's going to do really well overseas. But our number one movie, and the real story of the weekend, was Lucy, and that opened to uh, just under $44 million. That's, uh, that's quite the breakout. About, like, two weeks ago, I didn't think Lucy would break $20 million. So, um, that's a really good opening, and honestly, it's... I mean, I'm, I think the, the concept is a big part of it, but... Honestly, a lot of the draw was uh, was ScarJo, and just boom, right there, she proved herself. You know, she can open a film, and honestly, there aren't a lot of women that can open a film. You know, just based on on them. Uh, sadly, Angelina Jolie is one. Uh, ScarJo is now another, and I can't even really think of any others right now. I'm sure they're out there, but. It's it's kind of rare. Neither can I. I mean, there's there are there are female fronted films that end up doing well and having legs, but never yeah. really opening to um, what Lucy did. That that was that was absolutely shocking to me, and I expect the drop to be about ninety seven percent this weekend, um, based oh, on yeah. how terrible the film was, um, which which is disappointing. But it, it is great to see, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson is definitely a worthy. Um, action star um so i I would you know i i would love to see her try to do something else um again she's a lot more believable than angelina jolie because angelina jolie is a stick and i don't believe she can (laughs) beat anyone up that's true well at least more recently i will admit she was a lot more plump in the tomb raider movies that's true that was more believable but Mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah so that's you know i mean that, that 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 is great for you know the female fronted action uh, franchise. They seem to have they seem to have one, uh, which is good. Um, and with with Hercules, yeah, that's gonna that's probably gonna do well enough overseas to, for it to uh, profit. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know, um, but judging by similar films like Clash of the Titans and Wrath of the Titans that make like 200 million overseas, which is absurd. Because they're both really not that good of films, but uh, they seem to like them. So good for them, yeah. I'm sure they're. In case you're viewing over in uh, Spain, I was trying to think of. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Spain has that Spain. big of a box office market. Oh, all right. Well, maybe Paul Gasol is watching. Paul Gasol, shout out. Um, so. Yeah, other than that, uh, Apes, you know, I wish it, I wish that held better. Uh, it was a fantastic film. Um, yeah, other than that, Planes, I don't care. I don't remember what the other one was. Yeah, do I? What was the other? Okay. Irrelevant, clearly. <laughs> the director of that film that we just missed just, like, <laughs> broke his glass. Was as the Purge? His... Yeah, that was it. I didn't mind The Purge. There, there you go. I'm glad that you thought of it. I, did, I didn't mind it. Um... But I, but I think at the same time, same time, people saw it expecting better. It was just like, ah, oh, this was still not that good, and then it dropped again. Um, but anyway, uh, interesting box office uh, in a week that I thought wasn't going to be that interesting. Yeah, so yeah. good. Um, we'll move on to this weekend's movies. Um, we got some good ones coming out, actually. Uh, some, you know. Let's, but let's start, uh, let's just start quickly with, uh, Get On Up, uh, with, uh, starring Chadwick, uh, Boseman in the leading role as James Brown, um, 
Jeez, this guy, Jackie Robinson, James Brown, in a matter of two years. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Jeez, uh, I, I really like Chadwick Boseman, and I really think this is going to be a good film. Um, not, uh, it's, it's not going to collect a ton at the box office, but I, I really think that um, audiences who go out to see it will enjoy it. I, I plan on seeing it by myself, because none of my other friends really care. Um, I would go. But <laughs> you would? Wow. All right. I'll hold you to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I like the bows. Um, I'm just... Chadwick, if you're watching, you know, that's... Uh, it's a nickname. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, so I, And I hear his performance is really good, so, I mean, that's that's really why I want to see it. In the trailers, it, it actually looks like he really owns it and he really he's really does a nice job with it so i'd i'd really like to just see the whole film and, and see what he does with it yeah um yeah i like chadwick boseman he was good in 42 and uh you know as you said you know from one iconic black figure to another uh he'll probably play like martin luther king jr <laughs> next or something i mean why not <laughs> that's really true that'd be a really weird typecast to have but uh well, there are certainly worse ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm I'm not like a huge James Brown fan, but you know, I I respect right. him and everything. I like his appearance in Rocky Four. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. And you know, these types of movies um, can do really well uh, late summer. Uh, both The Help and The Butler, which were like you know black themed stories and whatnot, uh, released in late summer, did very well. So Get On Up could easily tap into that crowd. Yeah, and uh, very quickly, Jamie Fl Jamie Foxx as Mike Tyson. What do you think? Have you have I, you heard that yeah, yet? I, yeah, I, I heard. I, I still hasn't like registered. <laughs> I could I could totally see it. Okay, I, like I heard it. And I'm I'm on board. He could totally do his voice, That's and true. he just needs to beef up. That's all. Jamie Foxx has got it. I'm I'm on board. Anyway. Moving on to our next film, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the most, you know, I feel like this has been like the most anticipated film of the summer in terms of what is it going to do? Is it going to be good? And I just, the most unpredictable film. And it seems as though, according to reviews, it's going to be good and it's going to make a lot of money. So. I'm excited. Whenever he gets on above 90% of Rotten Tomatoes, it's usually a must-see, unless it's Gravity. Um, you know, I, 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 I like the cast they have together, except Zoe Saldana. Um, you know, I, I, I just feel like they have a really good script with this one, and that's why they went ahead with it. And a great cast of characters. Love Chris Pratt. Uh, Dave Batiste is going to do his thing, and I, I'm excited. You got Bradley Cooper as Rocket. You got uh, Vin Diesel as Groot. I, I just, it, it just seems like a great cast of characters, and I, I can't wait to see this film. Well, yeah, um, like you said, kind of a lot of question marks around this because uh, they're very, very much not A-list superheroes. They're probably like G-list. I think like. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even mean that pun. Um, this is Guardians of the Galaxy uh, uh, yeah. G list. I mm -hmm. was just picking a random letter that was down there. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it looks really good. It looks like they're handling it really well. Uh, like you said, it's been cast well. I don't mind Zoe Saldana. I think this is, you know, her kind of role playing um, a weirdly colored alien. So it's kind of her thing. Um, but yeah, you know, it looks good. Uh, the the box office has a lot of potential there, you know, a lot of question marks about that, too. Um, it did extremely well at its Thursday night previews, uh, better than The Winter Soldier, actually. But The Winter Soldier was in April when school was in, and now we're in the summer, so, you know, apples to oranges. Even still, based on that, Guardians is headed, I would say, like, $75 million is the floor, which is really good. Yeah, so... Um... Go to cupofdashjoe.com where he totally lowballs uh, the box office prediction on it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, t take a look, laugh at him, you know, next week. Comment, be like, ha ha, Jeremy, you missed out. 
and then uh, laugh at me for not uh, reviewing anything and being lazy. Um, have a good week. <laughs>